Good morning, church. It's good to be with you this morning. So last week, Wade gave a really good lesson about things that we need to stop as the church. And he called it, stop it, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess I thought, well, this morning, I guess I I already know what my topic's going to be called. (laughs) Pause for dramatic effect while the thing doesn't work. Do it, yeah. Yeah, right, do it. Well, that's not a... Okay, it's working. That's not exactly the name of my lesson for today, but it is about things that we do need to do as a church and as a body. Um, Our lesson title today is actually going to be on connection. I was praying about what to talk about this week, and I felt the Lord leading me in that that direction, and this was the the word that kept coming to mind was connection. So this morning we're going to talk about connection in a few different ways. We're going to talk about what it is, what connection, what it isn't, how do we do it, and and why is it even important? Why should we really even be talking about connection? You remember when you were a little kid, when you had the, the connect the dot games? Maybe it was something you did while you were in the car, your parents wanted to keep you busy, right? So it's got the dots with the numbers above, you start at one, two, you just connect the lines. And then all of a sudden these dots turn into a picture, right? And, you know, when we were little, we started with really easy ones, you know, like the one on the right, like, you know, it's a a dog, we all know it's a dog. And then the one on the left, you know, maybe it's a little bit harder, but I mean, we can figure that one out pretty easily too. I think that one's a star. But then as you got older, maybe you started still doing these puzzles and they got a little bit more difficult, right? Um, I I didn't do this, by the way, so don't come up and ask me what it is after. I I don't, I have no idea. Um, But as you got older... You know, you, you didn't start to see that, that image before you started, like when you were a kid. But with these puzzles, it's interesting because each dot has a purpose. But you need to be connected to another dot for it to really accomplish the creator's purpose and its design. All the independent dots, they, they don't seem like very much on their own. They don't do much on their own. But as these connections were made, it created something new. It was part of a whole now not just a dot on its own. It was part of something bigger. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. All of our scripture is going to be on the screen today. It says, For just as each of, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts. According to the grace given to each of us, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's to giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So Paul is using the example of the church like a body. It's one body made up of many members. But we're all different. We do not all have the same function. Each of us has a specific and a unique role to play in the church, and we all form one body. Paul says here, too, that each member belongs to all the others. We are all parts to a whole. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 21 through 26 says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, and that its parts should have equal concern for each each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. God has put his body together, and he wants us all to be connected. There is no division. The parts have equal concern for one another. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 through 4 and verse 16 says, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. 
From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, and each part does its work. So again, the idea of one body, one spirit. But verse 16 is really what I want to focus on today, that, that joined and held together by every supporting ligament. What, is that, what does that mean? How are we really to be connected? When we think about the body and we think about, for example, the human hand, it's very complex, right? It's made up of 27 bones, 27 joints, 34 muscles, 100 ligaments and tendons, and many blood vessels and nerves. But what good are those bones, the joints, and the muscles without those 100 ligaments and tendons? The bones can't move if they're not connected to the muscle that can make them move. So brothers and sisters, we must be connected to one another to fulfill our design as God's church. Now, some people have the idea, well, you know, religion is really just about me and God. It's, you know, it's about our relationship. I don't need organized religion. I don't need a church. You know, churches have people and people have problems. People can hurt me. It can be easy to slip into that type of thinking. And it is true that people in God's church from time to time do hurt people. They don't mean to. It's not out of negative intent, but we're human. We let our emotions, our thoughts, our words get the best of us sometimes. And when this happens, the church is affected. And that's what Wade was talking about last week. Over the last couple weeks, I've been dealing with some lower back problems. I think I have have some sciatic problems. And this one nerve, this one small nerve, is affecting my entire body. This, this one small part of my body is, is negatively affecting the entire body as I, as I groan, as I, try to, as I try to get up and bend over, get my clothes on in the morning. I'm groaning around. Just because one small part of me is hurting, it's affecting my entire body and the way my entire body can function throughout the day. So even though the church, which again, church just means a group of Christians, has issues from time to time, we cannot abandon the idea of of gathering together just to leave and go do our own thing. We can't just say, well, I don't like how things are going, so, you know, I'm out. Can I have permission to say something that, that might be perhaps controversial? I don't think, thank you, I don't think we need to agree on everything. And I'll take it one step further, or even should agree on everything as a church family. I don't see solo Christianity in the New Testament church anywhere. Now, it's true, our our religion is our relationship, but we need the body of believers. We need to be connected to the local group. Just like the body is designed to be united together, we need connections with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we connect? The elders have made a conscientious decision to try to provide many opportunities for the connection here. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is how do we connect to each other in groups? It's not just coming to church once or twice a week. I think this is kind of a misconception that we have sometimes. You know, people might ask, are you connected to your church? Well, sure, you know, I, I go every week, you know, and, and, and that's great. We're glad that you're here to worship, to learn more about God, his word. But for the connection part, you know, when we're, when we're greeting someone, you know, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. How was your week? Good. Okay, great. Is that really connecting, though? You know, we have such a short time, you know, maybe that 15 minutes before or after worship, um, do we really have enough time to grow closer, to get to know someone better in that short amount of time? Can you really get connected in just, you know, 15 minutes once a week? So we've got several ways um, that we offer connection here. So the first one is small group. So we've got a lot of different small groups um, that we have here. So for men specifically, we've got a month a monthly Saturday morning Bible study. Um, we've got a, a weekly meeting on Monday nights where we do the seven pillars of freedom where guys talk about their struggles that they're having. Um, we've got a guys retreat coming up 
Um, there's a few spots left, so see Chris if you're interested in that. Um, that's a great way for you to get connected to your brothers in a group. For women specifically, we've got um, opportunities for you too. There's a bi-weekly uh, meeting on Tuesdays. There's another bi-weekly prayer study on Wednesdays. Uh, there's a bi-weekly prayer bear opportunity to serve. Um, and women have retreats too. Um, a couple weeks ago, the ladies just came back from a retreat and had a really good time uh, from what I've heard. So we've got a lot of opportunities to serve in groups. And these are just some of the small groups that we've got currently running. So there's, there's talks of, of having more of these added too. Um, now, these studies are about Bible study and getting to know God and his word more, but it's also really about a time of connecting. People really share what's going on in their lives, the joys and the struggles that they're having, and this is where you really start to get to learn more about a person. Another opportunity to connect is through service and outreach. So one opportunity is the Pillars Homeless Shelter. So every third Tuesday of the month, we go to the local homeless shelter where we make a meal, we prepare it, we cook and clean. But while we're doing that, we're also connecting with each other. We're talking to each other. We're learning more about each other. Another opportunity is the sunshine baskets for the elderly and sick. So this is where we've got these pre-made baskets just to perk people up with little goodies that get delivered to people that are shut in. This is a really good opportunity to connect. Um, the elderly really long for connection. The shut-ins can be a greatly underserved demographic. This is also really good for kids, too. So, you know, do we get our kids connected? We're training the next church generation. You know, do they serve? Do they see us serve? Another opportunity here is going to be activities. And we've got a lot of these that we do. So we had the board game night a couple weeks ago. Um, that's a great way to connect to each other by playing games. Um, we've got the sports outing. So every year we do like the Timber Rattlers game. Um, we had bowling yesterday. That was really well attended. We had about 30 people there. Um, we've got the Green Bay Gamblers game coming up soon. We've got the T-Rats game coming up this summer. So there's lots of sports outings if you're a sports person. We've got, um, oh, and, and one other thing with the sports thing. So this is a really good one too, like if you're kind of an introvert like me and like you don't like to do a lot of talking, like to go to an activity, it's a lot easier, right? You can talk about what's happening, you know, at the game or the event, um, and it's a good way to break the ice. So a good way to connect if you're an introvert. Um, the next one, potlucks and pitch-ins. Um, nothing brings together people like food, right? We all, we all like to eat. <laughs> movie night, another great opportunity, especially for introverts, but please no talking during the movie. Uh, projects. So we've had a lot of building projects going around lately, right? So the guys have been working together um, in groups. This is a great opportunity for connection. And then we also have our prayer initiative. This is a great conversation starter for people when they let us know about their prayers, uh, the things that they want us to pray for. So we can talk to them, you know, I've been praying for you. How is this going? Um, it's a great way to find out what's on people's hearts and on their minds. Um, like Laverne mentioned, we've got a, a great opportunity to connect to each other in a couple weeks during our, our group prayer meeting that we're gonna have where we can, where we can intimately share with each other the things that, that's going on in our lives and really get to know each other. So these are some ideas that we've got to connect in groups. Now, what about individual opportunities? Now, there's gonna be some of these that are gonna be the same, but it's, it's different when you do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So the first one is prayer. So this, obviously, it falls in both slides, can be done in a group or one-on-one, -on -one, but you can really open up when you're praying with someone one-on-one. -on -one. Have you ever heard someone pray for you? It's, it's really a powerful thing. It's an emotional thing and something great for us to do to connect. The next one is calling, just picking up the phone. So, you know, do you live far away? There, there's a lot of us that do. We're, we're a pretty scattered uh, locational like, group, right? So it's an easy one. All you've got to do is pick up the phone. Um, but if you're calling a millennial, please don't call us. Just, just text us. <laughs> which gets me to the next one, which is going to be text messages, social media messages. It makes people feel good just to know that they're being thought of. It's, and this is another really easy one, an easy way for get us, to getting us started with connection. So if you want a quick homework assignment for this week, send a quick text to one person this week, just saying you're thinking about them or you're praying for them. Um, and you'll be surprised. It's a really great pick-me-up for them and, and for you and can start a good conversation back and forth. 
We mentioned food. So uh, food or coffee one-on-one, -on -one, just inviting someone to grab lunch. Um, I think coffee is a great one. Coffee is a really good connector and, and most people really like it. Coming to the house. I think this is a big one for one-on-one. For -on -one. A lot of times people just feel more comfortable when they're talking in someone's home than if it's a church building or in a public setting just because it's that, that personal, private, it feels safe. And those are really important attributes for someone to be able to open up. And then we also have activities too. So go hunting, go to a sports game, go shopping, get your nails done together, take the kids to the park so moms or dads can have some uninterrupted time to talk. Build or fix something. There's a lot of really handy people in our group. So ask someone for their help on a project that you're doing. For example, growing up, I got to know my father-in-law, who's a really quiet guy, um, really well by doing DIY projects together. And it's funny sometimes how, how people really start talking when they get a tool in their hand or they're doing something with their hands. It's an easy, natural way to open up. We can also connect to each other through a common mission. So people with similar passions, with a similar focus, with a similar purpose have common ground to already build upon. So what's your mission? So think back to the group connection slide, you know, which are those are you a part of? Well, maybe you say, well, you know, we don't, we don't have my mission. You know, nothing matches, you know, what I'm interested in. Well, and that's okay, because you know why? So you can start it. So what are you passionate about? Where do you currently serve? How can you bring someone alongside with you? Because service is really a tag team sport. Who are your connection points? We use the example of a hand, that ligament connecting the bone to the finger to the hand muscle. But who are you really connected here to? Think about it for a second. Someone that you know really well, someone that you do things with frequently. What's your connection point in our group? Now, don't say your spouse or someone related to you. That doesn't count. If you can't think of someone, though, that's your opportunity to start. That's your this week's homework. Make one conscious effort this week to get to know, to know someone here better. Perhaps start with the text message assignment. Any new connection has to start somewhere. Now, I'm not saying to be properly connected. We have to have a really close relationship with every single person here. A close relationship with every member. Again, think about the hand. The finger is directly connected to the palm of my hand. It isn't directly connected to my foot. But because the finger and the foot are part of the same body on a larger scale, they really are still connected. So if each one of us has at least one strong connection here, we're all going to be connected together. So maybe you've heard this and you're thinking, okay, yeah, great. Like, okay, who cares? Like, does connection like really matter? You know, I'm good on my own. I'm strong on my own. You know, do I, do I really have to? Do I have to, you know, do this? Well, the answer is yes, you do. <laughs> and the reason why I think is in 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be alert and, and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Notice how it doesn't say some group to devour. Like, I mean, he, he's a smart guy. Like, he's looking for some one yes, to devour. He's looking for the straggler. He's looking for the one not connected, for the one that's kind of easily picked off, maybe the one who's weak. Humans are a broken people, and Christians are no exception. We deal with pain, with sorrow, with sickness, just like people of the world. And sometimes we act like we're immune to these things because we're a Christian. Have you ever heard or, or thought statements like this before? Christians aren't supposed to be sad. Christians aren't supposed to be depressed. They don't deal with depression. Christians are supposed to put on their happy face all the time. My struggles are just my private issues that I'm working on. Nobody else needs to be concerned about that. Maybe you've heard something or thought something like this. Real Christians don't struggle with depression. They don't struggle with drug use. They don't struggle with pornography. 
They don't struggle with cursing. They don't struggle with homo or bisexuality. They don't struggle with alcohol abuse. And if I did share my struggle, can you imagine what people might think about me if I let someone know? Well, I hope they wouldn't think of me any different. It's very common at the end of a Sunday lesson for the speaker to say something like, if you need the prayers of the church, please come to the front as we stand and as we sing. But do we only go forward if we commit like the big sins, right? For us to be a connected church body, we need to get good at communication. And I think we do a good job of communication when it comes to our physical things. We let each other know about the sick, the traveling, the physical needs that we have as a body. But what about temptations? What about heartaches that we have? What about just our struggles of life that are on our mind? What if we felt comfortable going forward to tell each other about things that are weighing on our hearts? What type of church would that look like? A church that showed visitors that we aren't perfect, we're just broken people doing the best that we can one day at a time. A church that truly acted like a body, rallying around and supporting someone without judgment and pouring out love on them. And I understand it's not easy to open up to others, especially in a group on Sunday morning. But what if that became part of our church culture so that it didn't seem odd when someone came forward, but it actually was done very frequently and it actually became the norm? The more we do it, the more it's going to feel natural. We pride our church on, on being like a family, and we do a great job of that. But family shares what's happening in their lives, the good and the bad. We need each other. Many of us have heard the common verses, Ecclesiastes 4, verse 12. Though one may be overcome, overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 11, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either one of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, for how can one keep warm alone? We need to look for those that have fallen down. We'll never know that they've fallen down if we don't connect with them and really get to know them. It says, but pity the one who falls and has no one to help them up. Family, we're here to help pick you up. So in concluding, this morning we talked about how connections not only vital in a person's physical body, but in a spiritual body. We asked ourselves, am I really connected and what's my connection point? We talked about various ways to connect on a group and on a one-on-one -on -one level. So I'll give the invitation now. If you have something on your heart, something you're struggling with, and you want us to pray for you, come and sit on the front row when we sing our next song. But maybe someone will, maybe somebody won't. But what I really hope is that we feel comfortable enough to do this. Trusting our brothers and sisters won't treat us any differently and love us all the more for being open and honest. Let's all grow in our connection to one another. Let us now sing the song of invitation.